Hello, I'm Jason Butts, a Lieutenant Paramedic with the Castle Rock Fire and Rescue Department. This is my partner, Joe Dell. He's an Engineer Paramedic, also with the Castle Rock Fire and Rescue Department. Today we're going to be explaining the procedure of CPAP, or Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. Uh, we're going to walk you through the procedure, and uh, Joe's going to perform the procedure on our patient. Um, the first and most important thing that we can do um, when, before performing this procedure is to make sure that we have proper BSI or body substance isolation. Uh, Joe has chosen gloves and goggles for this procedure, which are uh, appropriate. Um, the next thing Joe's going to do is position the patient appropriately uh, to perform the procedure. For this procedure, Joe's going to get the patient in a high fowlers or a sitting upright position. The next thing Joe's going to do is make sure that the patient would actually uh, be a candidate for uh, the CPAP and by do, to do that he would check for a radio pulse to make sure that the patient has an adequate blood pressure to perform the procedure. Once he's determined that the, the patient does have uh, an appropriate radio pulse, he's going to perform a complete secondary and uh, primary assessment on the patient. Um, and while doing that, he's going to place the patient on oxygen as well while we set up the equipment and prepare for uh, performing the procedure. Um, the next thing Joe's going to do is check for the patient's lung sounds. These are important in determining whether the patient, uh, how far the patient is in his um, disease process and will help uh, Joe make decisions to uh, perform the procedure. Since Joe's uh, assessed the lung sounds now, he will uh, continue with his vital signs. The next thing he's going to want to do is obtain a blood pressure. One of the things that we would consider is to perform um, electrocardiogram or cardiac monitoring on this patient. And um, if you can't get to it initially in your assessment, um, at some point during your treatment of the patient, that would be appropriate. Uh, the next thing Joe's going to hook up uh, for this patient is the SpO2 or the the pulse oximetry for the patient, and we'll monitor that as well. And then the last thing that Joe wants to hook up is in title for this patient. The in title monitoring will help us determining, determine where the patient is currently and where he is while we're performing the procedure. Uh, the device we use is a nasal cannula device, so Joe will place that under the non rebreather mask um, to monitor in title. One other device that you may use if your agency has it available is a, is a peak flow meter. Once Joe's completed his assessment and provided himself with information on vital signs, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is explain the procedure to the patient. Uh, this can be a very scary procedure for a patient, so it's important that we explain to him exactly what we're going to do and exactly how the procedure is going to go and walk them through the process. Joe's going to check his CPAP equipment. Um, currently, this is the CPAP equipment uh, that we're going to use for this patient. Uh, there's many different CPAP devices out there. Uh, the most important thing is to become familiar with your CPAP device and follow your manufacturer's recommendations in how to use and set up that device. So Joe's checked to make sure the headgear that he's going to use to hold the CPAP mask on is appropriate for this patient as well as sized this mask for this patient. Joe is then going to hook the CPAP device up to oxygen and make sure it is running at uh, the proper um, liters per minute that he wants to have it uh, for the patient that he'll be treating. From this point, Joe has uh, set up his equipment, and now he's going to uh, place the patient on CPAP. The first thing he's going to do is remove the non-rebreather mask, 
He'll leave the um, end tidal device on the patient so that we can monitor that um, throughout this procedure. The next thing Joe's going to do is place the mask up to the patient's face and, from the, and also have the patient hold the mask at this time. Uh, this will help the patient become com comfortable with the mask and also allow Joe to uh, set up the uh, headgear and attach the mask to the patient. Um, Joe's going to place the headgear on and attach it to the mask. And one of the most important things that, that we can do at this point is to coach the patient through, the, this, through this process. As you can see, the, um, the device can be a, a scary device for the patient, and so we want to help them um, to get better with the device, and so we need to make sure that they're uh, comfortable uh, with the device so that it may help them. Um, once Joe's got the device attached to the patient appropriately, he'll go ahead and reassess the patient. Uh, he'll be looking for an improvement in the ven ventilatory status of the patient. Uh, he'll be checking his skin signs. Uh, he'll be monitoring the SpO2 or pulse oximetry. Um, one of the more important things that he'll do is check for lung sounds. Uh, hopefully we'll hear improving lung sounds while the patient is uh, receiving this procedure. Uh, Joe will also monitor the end tidal CO2. And then he'll also look for adverse reactions to one thing that uh, Joe may be looking for is uh, signs and symptoms of a pneumothorax or some type of barotrauma uh, that may be caused by the device. Um, once Joe has reassessed the patient and monitored the patient for uh, absence of adverse reactions, um, then he will uh, continue to monitor the patient and that will conclude uh, continuous positive airway pressure for CPAP.